The founder of the Jesuits, Ignatius of Loyola, had many contacts with influential Erasmists and Alum brothers during his studies at Alcala de Henares, as I show in chapter two. Indeed, his positive approach to conversos and Jews predates the foundation of the Society of Jesus, of Jesus in 1540, despite the assertion of many experts to the contrary. His openness towards conversos may have been motivated by the financial support that he had sought from the network in Spain and in the Spanish Netherlands before founding the society, and that he would continue to seek as the superior general of the Jesuits. In spite of this down-to-earth concern, Loyola undoubtedly was, as Henry Kamen put it, powerfully put it, a deep and sincere spiritual Semite. The foundation of the Jesuits coincided, for better or worse, with the rise of the Spanish anti-converso hysteria that reached its peak in 1547, when the most authoritative expression of the purity of blood legislation, El Estatuto de Limpieza, was issued by the Inquisitor General of Spain and Archbishop of Toledo, Silicio. Even though Pope Paul IV and Silicio's former pupil, King Philip II, ratified the Archbishop's statutes in 1555 and 1556, respectively, in spite of the latter's earlier opposition to it, the authority and impetuous character of Archbishop Silicio did not deter Ignatius of Loyola and his converse's successor, Diego Lainez. Encouraged by their close converse collaborators, they vigorously opposed the Inquisitor's attempts to preclude conversos from joining the Jesuits. They, had, they also had to counter the Jesuit provincial superior in Spain and Loyola's relative, Antonio Arauz, who, abetted by his penitent, the Prince of Eboli, Luis Gomez de Silva, made himself the Jesuit harbinger of the Arbian policy of blood purity. In a letter addressed to the Jesuit Francisco de Villanueva, Loyola straightforwardly wrote that in no way would the Jesuit constitutions accept the policy of the archbishop who, according to Loyola, should take care of his own business rather than interfering with the internal issues of the society. The problem was that the flourishing college, college at Alcala de Henares, which was inaugurated by the Jesuit Villanueva in 1546, and became a mine of Jesuit converse of vocations, was located within Silithio's diocesan jurisdiction. In this delicate affair, Loyola was aided by his plenipotentiary emissary, the converso Jeronimo Nadal, who visited the Inquisitor in 1554. In communion with Loyola, Nadal insisted that the Jesuit constitutions did not discriminate between candidates of the society on the basis of lineage. Nadal, therefore, during his visit to Iberia, admitted a, hand, a handful of converso candidates, and in a heated debate over the admission on, of one of them, Luis Santander, Nadal frankly and proudly replied, we Jesuits take pleasure in admitting those of Jewish ancestry. The heated polemics over Inquisitor's Silicio's legislation were still echoed three decades later in Bishop Diego de Simanca's Defensio, Defensio Toletani Statuti, which was published uh, in 1573, despite the fact that the Inquisition prohibited a year earlier, further discussion on the purity of blood issue. This text, which publication date coincides with the Jesuit Third General Congregation, in which the anti- and pro-converso lobbies collided, is of special concern in my book. Not only because, in contrast to the early Jesuit leadership, 
it defended Inquisitor Siliceo's statutes, but also became Simancas tract may have been utilized by some Jesuits to promote similar anti-conversal legislation in the society of Jesus during the decade of fervent discriminatory propaganda that preceded General Congregation 5 in 1593. Indeed, a Jesuit from Toledo copied many excerpts from Bishop Simanca's book in 1591. They are preserved in the Jesuit archives in Rome, but until now have remained unnoticed because a Jesuit archivist inserted the manuscript, whose genre he did not recognize, into a folder containing documents related to the foundation of the Jesuit College at Toledo. These excerpts are analyzed in chapter one for the first time. In the context of earlier anti-conversal texts, they suggest the genealogy of modern racism, from Mayor Sarmiento to Inquisitor Silisa to Bishop Simancas to anti-conversal Jesuit legislation, and they indicate the correlation between early modern institutional Catholicism and the new racism developing in Spain and spreading outwards. In this perspective, the anti-discrimination policy of the early Jesuit leadership constituted an act of bold and tenacious resistance to the early modern Iberian zeitgeist. As a result, the minority of Jesuit of Jewish ancestry socially and psychologically bonded one to another or dissociated from one another shaped the history of the early society of Jesus. They held the highest administrative, administrative offices, defined the society's institutional development and spirituality, revised Loyola's historiography by assigning it an inflated anti-Protestant character, filled the ranks of linguistically adroit missionaries in Asia and the Americas, authoritatively represented the society at the Council of Trent, significantly contributed to the transformation of the society into the first teaching order and to the placement of Greco-Roman culture in the center of the Jesuit school curriculum. Influenced by the Dominicans from the school of Salamanca, boldly offered a new epistemological frame to casistry as a transition from medieval tutorism to modern probabilism. Developed a new discipline of moral theology and staffed the papal penitentiary office at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Some came from families who generously supported the work of the society and the foundation of a number of Jesuit colleges. Others enthusiastically engaged in many other extraordinary literary, diplomatic, and scientific endeavors. Especially popular among them were different missions dealing with heretics and schismatics. As the Jesuit Garcia Giron de Alarcon put it, by their sanctity and learning, they render the society illustrious. On a much larger scale than the historian Marcel Bataillon has intuitively suggested, these contributions of Jesuit of Jewish ancestry help to shape early modern Catholicism by complementing the work of their distinguished Iberian converse of fellows in the 16th century, such as Joan Luis Vives, Saint Juan de Avila, Luis de Granada, Santa Teresa of Avila, Benito Arias Montano, Luis de Leon, San Juan de la Cruz, and many others. However, after the, de the death in 1572 of Francisco de Borja, born exactly 400 years ago, the grandson of Pope Alexander Borgia, and the, and the third superior general of the society, a close-knit anti-conversal party gained ground within the society, as indicated by the archival material on the Italo-Portuguese sabotage 
of the election of Juan Alfonso de Polanco as Borja successor during third general congregation in 1573, which I analyze in chapter three. Upon election as vicar general, the Converso Polanco was the most prominent figure in the Society of Jesus. He had been a senior administrator in the General Curia in Rome since his appointment by Loyola in 1547 as society secretary. Because the previous two vicars general, Lainez and Borja, had been elected superior general at the subsequent general congregation, Polanco was considered the most probable candidate for this highest post in the society. After all, to the dismay of the Italian Benedetto Palmio and the Portuguese, the Spanish electors dominated the congregation. They governed all but one Italian province, and the province of Portugal was also in their hands. Several Jesuit scholars have recently discussed this anti-Polanco campaign more critically. Some pointed out that the veiled attacks against Polanco for his Judeo-Christian ancestors were directed in reality against the Spanish nation. Others suggested that the distinction must be made between the anti-Spanish motivation of Italian Jesuits and the anti-converso opposition to the Portuguese group. However, the archival material that I examine in my book reveals that the real intention of both Italian and the Portuguese was to impede the election of Polanco or any other converso candidate. Spanish was a euphemism for Jew slash converso, and the anti-Spanish campaign during the third general congregation was thus merely a camouflage for the Italo-Portuguese anti-converso conspiracy. In spite of the death of the anti-converso royal minister, Rui Gomez de Silva, and his Jesuit protege and confessor, Arauz, in 1573, the anti-converso lobby found support in the newly elected Sapira general, Everard Mercurian, who from the very first years of his office cleansed the house. He removed from Rome, and possibly from Italy or even Europe, almost all Spanish Jesuits, especially those who were accused of being part of the Converse lobby. Ironically, Mercurian segregation policy created new opportunities for some Converso or pro-Converso Jesuits who had occupied high-ranking positions in the Jesuit administration to reinvent themselves as prolific writers. Three clear examples are Polanco, who spent the last years of his life composing the first multi-volume chronicle of the Society of Jesus, Nadal, who produced his monumental Evangelica Historia Imagines with 153 superb engravings, and especially Pedro de Ribadeneira, who in the last 40 years of his long life composed an impressive number of writings on history, historiography, asceticism, and politics, many of which were multi-edited and translated, assigning him a foremost place among the writers of the Spanish Golden Age, as I show in chapter three. Arguably, the discriminatory policy of Mercurian one that was subsequently endorsed also by the fourth Sapiro general, Claudio Aquaviva, and the defeat of the Converso lobby during the general congregation triggered the anti-Roman movement by Spanish Jesuits known as the Memorialistas. Contrary to what the closet Converso Ribadeneira argued in an attempt to minimize the particip participation of his fellow Converso Jesuits in this movement, some members were indeed of Converso background. 